our guest bedroom. This is Did You Pack Snacks, a family travel podcast. Howdy, y'all. My name is Colin. And I'm Meg. And this is the podcast where we chat all things high, all things low, and all the long miles in between of traveling with kids. That's right, folks. We are parents ourselves. I thought you were going to chime in, but nope. <laughs> Awkward silence. I was inve- envisioning. I was like, oh, that's right, folks. We are parents ourselves. And you're like, yep. We got two girls. And that's right, Megan. This is going to be back and forth, high energy, fun (laughs) podcast. But instead, I'm leading this by myself. Oh, man. Maybe you can tell the people what the episode is about today. The episode today is we're doing a country deep dive. That's my we're under the water sound. Going into all the nitty gritty on the country of Vietnam. Ooh, what a great country. We spent a month there. We spent a month there back in 2022 yes we were there for a whole month we were in hoi an we were in da nang we were in hanoi we were in sapa and so we did some we checked off some of the bucket list experiences there yeah i feel like we got a good vibe check and i think we're gonna have some helpful tips for anyone that maybe wants to visit vietnam this year yeah so so yeah yeah so yeah so yeah yeah so yeah and you can't tell I am so sick, or I just sound sick. Really? I can't tell, You Megan. can't tell? I sound no. like I have, like, plugging my nose when I'm talking. <laughs> well, and me, I'm just, I just took Tylenol an hour ago, so yeah. I'm good. I feel like January has been the month that everything that our kids get, we, we get. get. So it feels like this revolving door of sickness, yeah. and I'm kind of over it. Oh, I'm so over I'm January. I'm feeling the seasonal depression of being here in January. It's cold. Everyone's sick all the time. I just miss the sun. I'm a snowbird, and I just wish. I mean, we did this last year, where in January, we went and lived a month in Mexico. Yeah, we went to Mexico. What, Geniuses. What were we thinking? Not having something planned. Well, we, we planned something, but it was for the end of February. That's not soon and I'm enough. Like, yeah, it's right. It's not soon enough. We're ding-dongs. Okay, so I you, actually have to pause and go blow my nose. You can leave that in if you want. Go blow your nose, and we'll be right back, folks. <laughs> All right, Megan's gone, and I just want to take this time to just have a one-on-one with the audience, just me and you. It's never been just me and you. So I just want to tell y'all, man, I appreciate y'all, just appreciate y'all listening to the podcast, tuning in from wherever you are. Our top cities are Atlanta and Charlotte, Chicago. So if you guys are in those cities, man, just want to say thank you. We got some new listeners from Australia this week sending us dms over on instagram megan you can come back i'm just having a one-on-one with the audience okay but from wherever you are listening to in the whole world we just want to say thank you and we're back to the show all right so we're (laughs) gonna do a deep dive on vietnam but first megan yeah we got a burning question we have a burning question explain what a burning question is a burning question is a question that you send to me in our dms and we decide to read it on air and answer it for everyone which is why it's burning yes it's burning it's just on your mind on your heart so this is from gabrielle she says we are wanting to go overseas with the kids this august or september and would love your options or opinions, sorry. Okay. Thinking either Iceland, Ireland, or England. Oof. What do you guys think? Any recommendations? My mind is made up. <laughs> what? I oh, w- and I, d- I looked, because I actually knew her back in college, and I went oh. and over and clicked over. She has three kids wow. that kind of look like seven ish and younger okay but no babies okay no babies yeah that's good to know past the baby stage no strollers well i mean maybe a stroller but you know everybody can walk yeah yeah maybe a a diaper change every now and then maybe but like still pretty mobile pretty mobile um yeah no formula no breastfeeding (laughs) okay um okay good we covered our bases so our options are iceland ireland or england this is easy okay what would let's, you say? Let's say it together at the same time, what we think each other's going to say, okay? Well, no. Let's say what we would choose. I know. One, two, three. Iceland. Ireland. Whoa. I did it on purpose. I actually knew that you are going to choose Iceland, so I just wanted to spice up our answer. All right. Well, you give me your reasons why Ireland. Okay. I'll tell, say why England, but first let's diss England and why <laughs> England did no, no, not no. make the I cut. Think, I think England would be great if you like... 
it's just a different vibe because Iceland and Ireland feel very road trip friendly. Yes. You're at your own pace. You're going to see a lot of natural landscapes. Mm-hmm. You can kind of set your own road trip itinerary, be on your own schedule. You're most likely going to live out of your rental car. Yes. England feels a different vibe. You're Oof. you're definitely going to spend a good amount of time in London. How could you not? It's an amazing city. Love London. But you're going to have like the big city vibes and then you're you might rent a car and go down to like Cotswolds or something, Mm -hmm. but you're probably going to be utilizing the train system and visiting places from there. So for me, that one just stands out as kind of a different trip, which if London is a bucket list destination, I'm team England like you're going to love it. Although August will be hot. But go. I mean, it's that's gonna, the main reason why I you're said not, no. You're not going to be disappointed. But I do think that the other two trips have more of a similar vibe. Yeah. And maybe for like a family, I feel like unless you're just city driven, I would just, because we, we are who we are and you're asking our opinion, right. I would choose one of the road trip yeah. destinations. The unofficial tagline of Colin and Meg Travels <laughs> is road trips around the world. Yeah, we like um, a good road trip. All right, give me why Ireland. I just liked it because it's probably one of the warmer times of year that sure. you can visit. Ireland can be really windy, so the wind chill can make it real cold. Um, I love that everything would be green. I just liked the road trip vibe, and I was imagining them like hopping in their car and driving to Dingle and exploring the coast stopping on the roadside to see like castles and then you have lambs and Mm. the cliffs of maher like i just felt like wow there are a lot of things to see yeah but it's also a great place because you can look at all of the options and then pick and choose the ones that stand out the most to you it's really easy with kids because very laid back very laid back all the all the pubs have like kid-friendly food for lack of a better word you get french fries everywhere fish and chips yeah um i just feel like the gas stations are incredible and like conveniently it's really easy to drive around ireland people are friendly you don't hit a lot of traffic i mean obviously you probably explore dublin for a day or two yeah but other than that you just don't really encounter like stress sure it kind of feels stress-free yeah. But also beautiful. Yeah. Everywhere you look is... Everything's po- poetic and someone's playing music in, your, in, in the background at, at all times. Yeah. And, it's just very yeah. iconic. And so for me, I was just like, man, that feels like a win. You're going to see beautiful things. Okay. You're going to have a relaxing trip like with your kids. Stop when you want to. Go to a gas station for snacks. Okay. I don't know. I thought it would be a win. And and you don't have to pack like excessive winter gear. Like you're not oh, going to encounter that snow. That is a win. Okay. All right. But this is why I think you should go to Iceland though. It's everything that Megan just mentioned. Yeah. But you want to kick it up a notch. Say you want to board a ferry and go see the largest puffin colony in the world. True. Well, it just so happens August and September is the best time to see it. More preferably mid to late August. Um, and then you have the midnight sun. Well, not really. That would be like kind of July. But August, you'll still have daylight until late in the evening. Long days. Right. So the opportunity for a road trip is the same as Ireland. Um, I would give it also a laid back vibe. It can be. You yeah. won't be in like traffic, really. You're not, you know, wheezing through skyscrapers. You're, you know, there's gas stations with great hot dogs everywhere. I will say Ireland would be easier on the wallet. Food, yeah. And Ireland I, would be easier just to get a cheaper meal where Iceland, it's kind of like you're just going to spend money. You're going to spend between 50 to $80 at lunch if you're eating out. Yeah. Uh, but you could do the Airbnb route. Yes, it's going to be like between two and 300 bucks a night. But then if you get groceries, which are, save money. there are a lot, uh, you can just eat spaghetti every night or hot dogs which is what we've done before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the landscape is way more dramatic. Black sand beaches, cliffs, mountains. You can even see, you can even go kayaking on, on a glacier, glacier lagoon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Iceland's got its perks. It's a little more expensive. If you want a little bit more adventure, I would say Iceland. If this is your first international foray and say your youngest kid is still super young, then you're like, let's just do Ireland. Just as cool just as friendly people are great i would look up like a couple honestly i would be the deciding factor for me is i would like look up a couple pinterest photos Mm. of 
Ireland and Iceland. So you're saying make a scrapbook. Or make a little like vision board and like pick out a few Which things. Is a scrapbook from sure. the 90s. <laughs> okay. Make a little vision board and then whichever one you're like, okay, maybe Iceland's a little bit more money. Maybe it's a little bit more work, but I want to see that. Mm. Then like that might be your deciding factor or same with Ireland. Maybe you're going to like pull up a couple images of things that you could see and you're going to be like, I want my kids to see castles. Yes. So honestly, I feel like that could be the deciding factor. You're going to have a great time. Thanks for asking our opinion. Yeah. means a lot. Yeah. Oh, one more. Ah, I was going to add one more thing. We have time. Okay, we have time. I was just going to say the reason why I chose Iceland is because it's if you're in August, you spent the whole summer sweating, wearing shorts, you're ready for like a little change. If you want that early fall experience, then go to Iceland. Pack a light sweater, well, maybe a little bit thicker, and you'll be grand. Anyways, that was our burning question of the week. We hope you enjoy going to any of those destinations. Gabrielle. Gabrielle, am I saying that right? Yeah. Um, if you go to any of these places because we told you, please let us know. Okay, also I you have... You can't see this, but I'm giving a double thumbs up. Yes, he's giving a double thumbs up. Also, I have some news that I wanted to share that I'm just proud of. What? Okay, so we talk a lot about the Faroe Islands. We love it. It was one of our favorite trips that we've taken oh, as a family. This is, this is great news, yeah. And we worked with our tourism board while we were visiting. And so we got this email. Anyway, there's been an exchange, but we finally got the photo that showed. Do you have your phone on you? Yeah. I'm going to show the YouTube viewers the photo. Okay. If you're listening on Spotify, sorry. You're just going to have to pull over, hop on over to YouTube, and I'm going to walk we over. We got the confirmation in this little photo that they chose one of our pictures from our time there. Colin's showing it to the camera now. They chose... I'm on YouTube only. <laughs> they chose one of our pictures to be in the airport, like blown up, taking up an entire wall. It's me and Liv in front of a waterfall. And it's basically in their spot in their main airport where you would go to um, get like information about what you want to do when you're in the pharaohs i mean the airport is not big this is i mean the, it's not big you walk in and you're gonna see Liv and i, I mean, on the wall the the baggage claim area is pretty much the size of our house right it's super cute you walk in it's this really is, cute this is the major airport of the country and you'll see megan and Liv just frolicking around under a waterfall i'm really excited i hope that somebody that's somehow connected to us visits relatively soon because i just want yeah. like somebody to take a selfie with us i think that would be so I cool mean, we can just go and i feel like we've made our mark you know who knows how long they'll keep it up on the wall that's the standard now every country we go we need to be on the billboard so, oh god no that doesn't <laughs> need to be the standard but it was just a really sweet honor for them to use one of our photos so that was fun yes thank you to all you kind folks from the fair islands we hope we'll be back someday and that someday i'm thinking summer 2025 see you there colin likes to plan ahead all right, so should we get into it? Let's do it. The deep dive, the vibe check, Vietnam. Let's go. Vietnam. We had never been there before. This was our very first time. And we made a grand entrance into the country Ooh. because when we were visiting, there were a lot of COVID protocols that were still in place when it comes to visas and yes. getting permission. And let's just say <laughs> we had a little fatigue. I must have misread something, and I did it well, wrong. Well, here's, here's the thing. We went to Vietnam on our Live Anywhere with Airbnb year. Yes. The year where we were selected by Airbnb to travel. We went to 15 countries. Vietnam was country number 14. Yeah, we had, we had done so some damage. We were a little fatigued. We have been playing like a board game pretty much all year long. Like, oh, this, let's go to this country, bought tickets. Oh, what are the COVID restrictions? Oh, can't go there. Go like So we've been playing this game right. all year we long. We really never knew where we were going to be 30 days from any point in time. Yeah. Like it just kept changing. Needless to say, our grand entry into the country was that I didn't have visas for my kids because I listed them. Was it only for you? Well, no, I got one for you. Oh, you didn't need one because you're from Malaysia right, with right. a Malaysian passport. I needed one. And then on my visa, I had to list dependents. So I listed the girls and thought, done. Like, we're good. Yeah. No, we weren't good. No. We got there and they were appalled, like could not believe that I how had. How dare you? How dare I? So then I'm like, well, can I apply right now? I'm literally looking at an office of immigration. And let me tell you, there was no one at the airport 
because tourism we, was like at a zero. Yeah, tourism was at a zero. And we were at this point, everybody from our plane had left the airport, gotten their bags. It was just us and, and the employees. And 20 officers. And like 20 officers. Yeah. Long story short, they made a lot of exceptions. <laughs> and for some by the grace of God, honestly, yeah. they didn't put us back on the plane. Because they, they were holding the plane They for were us. holding the plane just in case. And they made a bunch of exceptions, allowed us to apply in person. And we got through security and into the country. But man, I'll never forget our, yeah. our grand welcome there. But what does that say about Vietnam? Like, what was that first impression for you? That first impression was like, oh, I don't know. I, I don't even know. I wouldn't say it was a country first impression. I immediately just felt like, I'm I'm doing everything wrong. I don't yeah. belong here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what it said to me was like, it's a country that's like, we'll make it work. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. good vibe. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll like, make it work. All right. You don't have everything together. We'll just, we'll, we're going to figure it out. I'm going to escort your husband out of the airport, go through customs to go get cash because why don't you have Vietnamese dong in, on you? Uh, and then we'll take your picture. We'll make you pay a fee. Like, let's just figure it out. Oh, yeah. and let's make it happen i know because once we actually applied they're like okay now you have to pay in the local currency i'm like we just got off the plane yeah you can't even exchange money until you get through customs right. why would we have local currency on us no but they made an exception so thank you vietnam because apart from that we would not have spent a month there vietnam they make it happen they make it happen um let's go through like the main facts about vietnam right okay. just the thirty thousand feet like what are the facts that you should know? So number one, there are several main hubs. If you are traveling from the US, you're probably gonna fly into Ho Chi Minh or Hanoi. If you are traveling from Asia, you may you can even add Da Nang to that list, which is a bustling metro by the coast. That's where we flew into, uh, but we also flew to Hanoi. Um, so those are your kind of main three airports. Yeah. Um, you can, we'll talk about the other destinations later, but let's talk about on the Colin and Meg scale of affordability, Megan, one to five, where does this country rank? Is five very affordable and one, what's, how do I, we've never done that well, before. The higher the numbers, the more expensive. Okay. So I would give it a 1.5. A 1.5. Yeah. It was really affordable. Okay. I felt, I mean, honestly, of course, anywhere you go, you can like choose the most expensive place to stay sure. and spend more money. But yeah. for really nice average stays, yeah, very affordable food, very, very affordable. affordable getting around very, very affordable, affordable. <laughs> uh we did splurge it was our opportunity to splurge on like a luxury hotel one time yeah and we were able to do so because we could offset the budget so yeah. yes it's affordable which is what you would expect in southeast asia i would say when once we got to the city uh if you wanted not vietnamese food Yes, it's going to cost. Yeah, like by the time we got to Hanoi, we were just craving like Tacos, Mexican food. <laughs> which there was a great taco And they place. had it, but you just were yeah. paying like $10 a meal instead of if you're eating local food, you're $2. paying $2 a meal. Um, fun fact number three, it's not necessarily a road trip, road trip friendly country. So like... No, don't. Know, <laughs> Colin and Meg wouldn't rent a car and drive through the country with kids. I would say that there's an organized chaos to how they drive. And yeah. similar to what I've experienced in India, it's just like there are no rules, but somehow everybody functions and doesn't hit each other because there aren't rules. But for somebody that's not used to that level of driving, mm. where lines don't matter and direction doesn't matter mm. and it's yeah. just really how loud you honk your horn, yes. I would not say get a map, rent a car, and go to town, yeah. um, I, I would definitely take advantage of the trains, Ubers, grabs, and use that to navigate, or overnight buses, we can get into that. Yeah. But I would get into, use those transportation over driving yourself for yeah. sure. So like Megan said, you got around using grab, which is kind of like the Uber of Asia. Um, you would go by train to different cities, which is super fun, we did an overnight train. You can also do buses, we also did an 
overnight bus. I don't know that I'd recommend that one, but it <laughs> was an experience. Right. And then you can also use the local budget airline called Vietjet, which was awesome. We used it that as well. Yeah. Um, before we get into all the fun stuff, here's some homework that you need to do. If you are planning a trip to Vietnam, this movie is going to just... Or mm. if you just like rom-coms with a hint of travel, you're yeah. going to love it. I mean, Netflix and Hallmark, I'm, I'm talking, you know, this is a Hallmark movie vibe yes but netflix is you know equally killing it but watch a tourist guide to love y'all come on i mean on the list it to me it hit every mark yeah rom-com travel asia vietnam great music cheesy jokes and then at the end they got well nah, no spoilers but i do think that it gives a good like cheesy perspective but you do get to see a lot of real life glimpses of life yeah. in vietnam i mean i'll be it's like pretty um a pretty like clean and hollywood version of I all know. the destinations yeah but still it's enough to kind of just pique your interest to be like oh this is what i can kind of see in vietnam right. yeah i think it's a good watch just don't go to vietnam thinking it's going to be this movie it's just kind of like you know an appetizer just to pique your interest to what it would kind of be like. But it is beautiful, it is great, and it's a necessary watch if you love travel and rom-coms. Anyways, Megan, let's hit them with the number one culture shock. Like, what hits you in the face right when you get out the airport? Yeah, I would say, we kind of already mentioned this, but traffic. Like, I, I just think if you're staying in one of the major cities that we mentioned, the vibe is like, you walk out of your apartment, Kids need to stay close to you. There are cars and motorcycles going everywhere yeah. and it's loud. I mean, um, 10 times motorcycles. Yeah, there's not, there's just a little bit of chaos and, right. and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I do think that it's one of those cultural differences that's going to yeah. kind of hit you in the face yeah. and make you want to take grabs, which is the local Uber, yeah. kind of everywhere just to avoid having to navigate that by yourself. Um, so I would say that was a big cultural moment. And and also in, in Hoi An, which we'll kind of share more about that, there is kind of that also maybe Southeast Asian cultural moment in a tourist place where you kind of get um, overloaded with People, people selling, trying to sell you people stuff. People just sell you stuff all the time. Or people might even stop and take a picture of you. Yeah, you just kind of have to get used to somebody wanting to sell you something all the time and then just say no thank you and carry on. But like our kids initially were like, wait, why Why aren't you like having a conversation with every person that wants to come why talk to you? Why are you being so rude? Yeah, and I'm like, I'm not being rude. I'm just saying no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. And then they got it. The kids got used to it because after a while they picked up the vibe that, oh, okay, it's not just three people that are trying to sell something to my parents. Yeah. It's everyone. It's everyone. So I would say that's a little bit of a cultural shock. Yeah. But I would say, I mean, even growing up in Asia uh, and, and on that trip specifically, we even were coming from Malaysia and I got like culture shock because I was just not used to it. Yeah. You know, I was like, there are so many motorcycles. The sounds, the, the weaving through traffic, it was just a lot. But after a, lot, a while, you just kind of like... You got used uh, to it. Yeah. You yeah. Gotta, it's kind of like you're, uh, if you've ever seen like ants walking in and out your yard. Like you kind of just have to like, if you're crossing a road, just go for it. They're not going to hit you. Okay, you you did. know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's true. You just got to be confident and you're like, I know where I'm going. And this is the direction I'm going. And they're like... I, I see you. That's, I see you and your confidence. That's what I mean like with the organized chaos is that people just go for it because truthfully, there would never be a safe moment to cross the road by like American standards. There's sure. just so many cars. But local people are crossing the road all the time because they're just confident and drivers are looking for people crossing the road and they just go around you. But I just remember having to have this moment where I'm like, I just have to go. Just I have just go. have to walk. I have to commit. I'm going to be okay. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Okay. Let's talk about the top experiences, like what people go to Vietnam for. Well, you know what I'm saying? The yes. places, the things, what to do, all that kind of stuff. I'll kick us off. Okay. One of the one of my favorite things that we did there was a Ha Long Bay cruise. We did like a two or three night cruise where we got on a cruise ship, but I'll be like very small one. You're out in the ocean, but 
you know, you as you open your window, you see all of a sudden you're passing by like a towering rock formation, like a like a baby island, and there's not just one. There's like thousands of them, you know, and your cruise ship is just like weaving through all of them. And you'll do like fun excursions, like go kayaking and there'll be like a hidden beach somewhere. And then there's also, but one of the islands is called Katba Island. And that is also where the movie Kong was filmed. And you just see like these hills, so many hills, thousands of hills. And then there's rice paddy fields going in and out of them. And we spent a day there, biking, eating some food, spending time with some locals there. And so the whole Haolong Bay thing is huge. Uh, we loved it. What else is there? No, I would say Haolong Bay definitely lived up to the hype. Yeah. Um, okay, so another city that people love to visit, and I would say it was one of my favorites too, is Hoi An. That's the whole reason we went to Vietnam. If you look up a picture of Hoi An, you're going to be convinced that you need to visit Vietnam. It's just picturesque. I mean, how would you describe it? It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I mean, you are surrounded by an ancient old city, you know, Vietnamese culture to the brim. And then there's like beautiful bridges surround and there's a river going through the city. And then there's these long boats. And then every single night is just a party, an attack on all senses. We're talking lanterns. You go on this boat rides with like, uh, a gondola person. Yeah, what do you and call you can, that? You can a gondola. A gondola person, person <laughs> and then you you know you, you pay him like a little bit of money, and he gives you these lanterns. Yep. And you make a wish, and you float it down the river. It's a, it's everything you want like a, an ancient Asian city to be like. Yeah, and it's really fun. It's really beautiful. I mean, I would say that it's definitely worth a visit. There is a part of me that wishes that they found a better balance between like the historical beautiful part of what mm -hmm. that city is and then it being like tourist central because you do feel like after a few days there, like we actually Maybe stayed a few in hours. We actually stayed in Hoi An for almost two weeks. Yeah. And after like two nights, we didn't go downtown at night. Because, like, the lanterns and everything draw a new crowd every day. Yeah. And you just kind of get fatigued. It was really fun to do it once. Yes. But then we kind of avoided that scene from for the rest of our stay because it was, like, so touristy. I mean, it was, but like... But still beautiful. So, I, like, I would tell people to still go. Yeah, still go. It was definitely an experience. But since we were staying there for a long time, yeah. we did other stuff I would night. spend like three nights there. Yeah, you know? if you're planning like a, like a bebop around the country. You hop off the taxi and you immediately like, you can take selfies with a Siberian Husky or like they'll set up like a lantern photo op thing yeah. and you go take pictures with that. But then during the day, it's really beautiful, like the old city especially. Like you were saying that one of your favorite things was to leave the Airbnb because they didn't allow cars on that road mm -hmm. before 10 a.m. Yes. So you'd go get breakfast and coffee on your bike and it just felt yeah. idyllic. Our Airbnb came with a bicycle. And so you could also rent scooters, uh, which by then, you know, I'm a confident scooter driver, but I'm not a confident Vietnamese scooter driver. Big difference. Uh, but yeah, I got a bicycle and I would go get coffees in the mornings and things would just calm. Like you would see like, uh, couples taking their wedding photos and you, I would go to these coffee shops. We had, they also had great like restaurants there. And Hoi An is also a popular place for people to, people to get custom suits, custom tailored made dresses, whatever you want there. And so like, that's another big reason why people go. We then, you know, we opted out of that. We opted out of that. But I mean, yeah, I've heard people, it's a great deal to get yeah. something made while you're there. Okay, moving on. Another place that I would recommend that you need to visit is to head up north to Sapa. Yes. So we took an overnight train from Hanoi to Sapa, which was an experience in and of itself. It was really affordable. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was just kind of a basic train cabin, but we all slept great. The girls thought it was like so much fun. And once we got to Sapa, Sapa itself is, is a cool mountain town. There's a lot of history, but what made the experience is we stayed at the Topas Eco Lodge. Ugh. Look it up. 
If you're going, this was one of my favorite places that we stayed that entire year of travel. Maybe in my top three hotels that we've ever stayed at. It was luxurious. It was beautiful. Everything was picturesque. The yeah. service was top notch. And you just can't get over where you are. I mean, you are just I mean, in the middle of the mountains. You have rice fields all around you. Yeah. You're eating incredible food at every meal. The accommodations were top notch. This isn't an ad, but it should be yeah. because everybody needs to just stay there. Even if it's just a night, we only stayed for one night, which honestly is a regret. We should have stayed for two. Why did we do that? Because we were on a budget. Yeah. But what we did though, is we checked in so early that we got there at the beginning of the day because we literally got off our overnight train and took like a grab. All this, all this is on our YouTube channel, by the way. Yes. Start with the overnight train video and just watch us struggle. Watch it unfold. But then watch the end of the video to see where we end up. Yeah, that's right, true. Going. Okay, so anyway, we checked in early that day and then the next day we basically stayed even after checkout to eat one more meal. Yeah. So you can definitely capitalize on a one night stay, but I'd recommend to at least stay there for two nights. Absolutely, and go hiking in the rice fields, go enjoy a day in your infinity pool yeah. on top of a mountain overlooking every single like rice field and valley. I mean, just gorgeous. It's breathtaking. So Sapa and Topaz Eco Lodge, definitely add that to your list. Uh, another big reason why people go to Vietnam is of course for the food. Now, when we were in Hoi An, we actually did a food tour with a guy named Harry. He was the number one Airbnb experience of Hoi An, and he lived up to the hype. We're going to leave his information below because you most definitely need to connect with him if you head to Hoi An. Remember the name, Harry from Hoi An. And, you know, he... What happened that day? We met him at, like somewhere i don't know so we met harry he took us on uh not just any kind of food tour he took us on a very special um like kind of behind the scenes tour we walked through uh this rice field to get to a guy that made special noodles um that's been making it for like decades showed us the traditional ways of uh, making desserts making noodles uh, uh how people harvested um uh, sprouts is it called sprout we call them taoge in in, in yeah, malaysia it, they were sprouts soybean sprouts yeah uh that you add to noodles anyways all these cool things and then in the midst of that you gain a new friend but i mean if you're going to vietnam any food tour is going to be great try all the things you may not like all of them but you're going to find something that you really like and you're going to walk away going man i did that yeah, and I think tours in general, this would be one of my like overall tips is we utilize tours. We did another tour where we went on um, bucket boats or another popular tourist excursion mm, yeah. in Vietnam. You can look them up, but they're basically these hand woven boats, but then they do these wild things and spin them like crazy. And yeah. it's like a whole experience that, I mean, I would say you should do if you're there. Um, so yeah, but we, we took it crabbing. We went remember? crabbing in our bucket boats. Yeah. It was the girls still remember that excursion. That's how you know it was I a mean, fun I one. I remember it. But I think we utilized tour guides in Vietnam because with the cultural differences and navigating it, it was just a lot easier and a lot less stressful to just book a tour and have somebody show up and take us. We even like hired a tour guide to kind of plan our trip to Sapa because navigating the train system, again, we had been traveling for a while, we were feeling a little fatigued. I was like, I just need help. I just wanna make sure I get on the right train and I'm yeah. going to the right place. And so I'll leave the link, it was Friends. Friends Travel. Friends Travel yeah. in Vietnam. We can leave their link below too, but if you're heading there, it would just be a great resource to reach out and connect so that you're not alone in planning your itinerary. Yeah, and I was gonna go into this later, later on in the podcast, but I want to just hang on here for a second okay. about this whole tour agency thing because I don't think it's like, I can't stress enough how, you know, the infrastructure in Vietnam may not be as accessible to tourists, you know, and I just want to paint the picture. Okay. Okay. So in order for us to get get to the, the town where the Halong Bay cruise left out of, I mean, 
there's no way to get there unless you drive. Right. And so a tour agency is going to get you connected with drivers. So anytime we wanted to go somewhere, they would say our driver is ready at your Airbnb for you. Right. Like that's the vibe. And then like when we went to, for the overnight train to Sapa, we had a, again, the same driver show up to our Airbnb, take us to the train station. And then when we got to the train station, we this is the crazy part. They, we didn't go get tickets or anything like that because, I mean, I would not know even how to. Yep. We sat at a lounge at a hotel and then someone came out of like the kitchen and they were like, come follow us. And so we walk out the back door of this hotel and then they walk us through this maze of a train station up and down stairs and then it took us straight to our cabin. There was like 10 trains that night, you know, and I would not even, there were no signs there was no like buy tickets here, nothing. No. It was just And they walked us on the train all the way to our cabin, which again, I wouldn't have known. Like it was just a chaotic scene, yeah. but because we had them, it was so easy. It was yeah, seamless. And we and again, we're well traveled people. We usually travel alone apart from tour guides we like booking tours be sometimes you know especially if it's a unique experience but this was the first time that we utilized like a proper tour company we were like these are all the places we want to see yeah these are all the modes of transportation that we're interested in taking yeah plan it for us exactly and they did and literally it made our time in vietnam so awesome exactly and it wasn't that expensive so yeah um, all right, couple more honorable mentions, places that we wish we went to that we didn't get to see, and then we'll jump into some family tips for all you families out there. Uh, but a couple honorable mentions. Uh, we want to mention the province or area called Ninh Bin, and it's from what I see, Megan, it is just you know, kind of the same vibe of Vietnam, but mountains and rice fields, but like these gorgeous rivers that kind of weave through these little towns. Yeah, we didn't get the opportunity to go there. No, um, that's something I wish we did, kind of maybe spend the night, you know, somewhere by the river. Uh, there's a beautiful waterfall. I hope I'm saying this right, but it's Ban Gyok, Ban Gyok, but it's on the border of China and it looks like Kervisa waterfalls in uh, Croatia, just emerald pools, you know, not just one waterfall. I'm talking like, I don't know, 30, 40 of them. And so this really beautiful, you know, waterfall. If you're adventurous, that would be a place. And then they also have island destinations and they have the island of Phu Quoc. I hope I'm saying this all right. Uh, but you can reference all this, look it up on Google. But it's another, when I look at pictures, I'm like, Vietnam has everything. They have everything. And we didn't give a proper shout out. The coffee culture mm, is top notch. We did an egg coffee class. An egg remember? coffee. That's like a very popular Vietnamese drink that you have to try. It's like so sweet. Um, but yeah, we did like a proper class to learn how to make it. So and it was sweet, really so fun. Strong. So strong. It was fun. It originated in Hanoi. Because during the occupation, you know, the local people were, you know, seeing this coffee culture come in from Europe and they're like, oh, we don't, we can't afford milk. And so there's a bartender in Hanoi that said, I'm going to create my own like creamy coffee. And he figured it out. Using eggs. Using eggs. And I mean, we made it and tried. Ah, oh, it was delicious. so good. They're also, Vietnam is known for pho. Yes. You can get pho anywhere, everywhere, all the time. Really affordable, really delicious. Yeah. Um, and then banh mi was another banh mi is very like, popular thing that was served everywhere we went. I bet, but in Vietnam, it was just a whole other level. I mean, right. I even went to the place where the late and great Anthony Bourdain went to and, you know, of course, stood in the line, got the banh mi. I, that was our, our first meal in Vietnam. And so, yeah, food is amazing. Drinks are amazing. Um, do all of that. Let's get into some family tips. Family tips. Let's hit them. Okay, so I would say one of the things that you need to look up if you're staying in a major city, just search kids cafes. Ugh. They're really popular. They have various names. It's not just one company, but essentially you're walking into an a play area for kids and there's also a cafe 
for adults. Yeah. Sounds really, I'm explaining something that the title already said, <laughs> um, but it was really cool because, you know, it can get really hot in Vietnam. So on days where Colin had to work or we were hanging back, we'd head to a kid's cafe. The girls would play for hours and we could order lunch and drink a coffee and work while we were all hanging out in the same space. Yeah. And it was just amazing. So if you're headed there, make sure to look up kids' cafes. What's and another and one? And it's not just a, a Vietnamese thing, I would say. I would think, I would say it's an Asian thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and these like are beautiful. I don't think about, these are not like the Chick-fil-A playground where I'm no. like, oh, my kid's going to get the flu here. They're like beautifully curated play areas like maybe there's like a cafe and then there's like a vet clinic it kind yeah. of felt like a mini children's museum like what yeah. you would experience if you paid to take your kids to a children's but just museum just well done affordable for all you like digital nomad families very clean working moms and dads like free wi-fi kids cafe that's your that's your go-to yeah uh the next on the list for families and for anyone really is just download the app grab I mean, I can't tell you how many times we ordered food in, you know, after a chaotic day of sightseeing and getting the right photos. And for us, we, we would be filming all day. And then we would get back to the Airbnb or the hotel. And I'm like, the last thing I want to do is go out and eat and sit at a restaurant again. Yeah. And so even though a lot of what you see in the app will be in Vietnamese, sometimes they'll have subtitles uh, or they'll have pictures um, and we ordered a lot using Grab. Another experience, I forgot to mention this before, but one thing you have to do, okay? <laughs> if you're a parent, maybe just do this by yourself and just kind of take turns. But if you want to go to the grocery store, just get a Grab bike experience. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like walking out of your door. You didn't get to do this because you were, you know, with our kids most of the time. But whenever I had to, like, go grab something, <laughs> Grab... I, you know, I was just looking forward to it. Yeah. Just that experience of meeting a total stranger. Hopping on their motorcycle. And you don't even have to talk. I hopped on the back and just weaving through the traffic. It's just so exhilarating. It was like a free Disney ride. <laughs> I mean, so the grab bike experience. You can do this in Thailand too, in other countries. Ah, I just love it. Um, last but not least... Vietnam, Megan, what would you rec where would you rank this if a family is like whether they're seasoned travelers or new travelers and they're taking their kids? Yeah, I would say What's that, like? that it's very welcoming for kids. Like I think that our kids had a great experience there, but I wouldn't say that this should be your first ever international trip because of some of the things that we mentioned. There yeah. is a level of culture shock and I think your kids could thrive, but I don't know. I'd want to get their feet wet and put them in some different situations before I just told you go to Vietnam first. Yeah. Because I do think there are other like less intense places to visit yeah. that I would probably suggest as your first international destination as a family. Like um, Ireland. <laughs> but it's definitely one to put on your list. Yes. We had a great time. And honestly, before we went, I didn't know how diverse the country was. I mean, we've mentioned all these different things from the mountains to the coast, to the culture, the food. It was so rich and vibrant in culture that it kind of stands as one of those places that's like uniquely its own. Yes. Like there's nowhere else like it. it it's uniquely Vietnam. And so I'm so thankful that we had the opportunity to visit. And I definitely recommend putting it on your bucket list, whether you visit this year or next year, we give it two thumbs up. Yeah, or even add it on, like make a Southeast Asian tour and go to like two or three countries. Yeah. You know, and add Vietnam to the list. Um, so there you have it, folks. If you do end up going to Vietnam, let us know. Like, does this is this helpful for you? Are you interested in going? I hope you are. Uh, but come back next week for more family travel, all things family travel. Parents, do not forget to pack snacks. We'll see ya. Bye.